So hello everybody, this is about replacing SRGV80 boards. These are boards you can put in lots of different Roland synthesizers from the 80s and the 90s. I think even into the 2000s some synths supported these boards and they all have one big issue. They have a faulty series of Elcos in them and the problem with them is that they do not simply dry out or expose their liquid no they tend to explode which is really problematic it can kill or destroy the whole board and even might damage somehow your whole synth when I first read this in a German synthesizer forum I thought ah, I might be a bit of panic but then this happened to myself and yeah it smelled pretty smoking in my studio and as I turned up my XV5080 I had this burning board inside of it and this Elko clearly exploded. So what can you do? So if you have such boards you should definitely replace these Elkos but if it's already dead maybe you might look for a replacement and there are two solutions for that. One is called Romulator which is there for quite some time now. But it was always a bit on the pricey side. It got cheaper now since there is now a second offering, but it's still 124 UK pounds for the programmer. And for each board, you need to pay 54 UK pounds and you need to add money for shipping as well. Yeah, that's the difference between the two solutions. This one needs a dedicated programmer, which you need to get if you want to burn the EEPROM on these boards. The other solution which is quite new now is from a Chinese guy and he's directly also selling it via his website so you get a direct shipment from China which worked fine for me and they are a bit cheaper and the difference with them is that you have Wi-Fi on these boards so you can leave them in your synth and program or update them via a Wi-Fi connection which is pretty helpful but you can also switch off the Wi-Fi and to save some power because this might be an issue which is also discussed on the page if you have several of these boards they might take too much power from the soon so it depends on which synth you use how much power it can deliver for the boards so it might be safer to switch it off yeah, we need to open up here the device. I want to put it in my GV1080, which has still three free slots in it. And here we have the boards. I ordered two, but first got only one, and then I complained and got a second one as well. So the casings are different, but the boards are totally identical. They have also the same revision number 1 to 2, which is the latest hardware revision of the boards. Also a nice design on the backside. But I decided to program it from the PC because I thought it might be easier if something needs to be fixed. So you can simply power it via USB and then you will also get the Wi-Fi. So we can simply connect to the Wi-Fi connection and the IP address via which you can then connect with any browser to these boards is also explained here on the website and you, and you get this little menu where you can upload the ROM and you can also deactivate and configure the Wi-Fi settings. And let's first check the firmware. So I have here 1.10, which turns out is the latest firmware which you can get. So we don't need to do anything about that. It's already up to date. And a word of warning here, it's clearly a copyright infringement if you simply buy these boards and upload the ROMs to that. So to be on the safe side, you need to own the original board and then you can use it as a backup. Uh, nevertheless, all the boards are linked from the, uh, his web page, but also from the other web page, they are linked. So you can simply download them as well. So upload process is pretty straightforward, takes about six minutes and then it's on the board and you should then disable the wireless to yeah not have meaningless wireless sending around in your rooms as well as saving up the power on the board. And let's do the same with the second board. To the second board I want to I want to upload the Asia data and it's blinking slowly when it's ready to do something. 
And let's connect now to the different Wi-Fi. So you could have all the Wi-Fi's activated, but the web page also says there might be conflicts if you have too much boards and yeah, they might create some issues with too many Wi-Fi access points. So, and we upload the second board and when it's uploading, the LED is shining constantly. And also this upload worked fine. So let's power up the machine and here it is. And it turns out both boards are detected and they show the presets. So let's give that a listen. So this is a bit of the Azure board. Some tablas, really nice. More percussion. And a bit of sitar. Nice. Let's go to the vocal spot. Yeah, you need some 90s bops and scats, <laughs> which I can't stand. But let's look for some choirs instead. Oh, that's nice. More scats <laughs> and deuce. So this went pretty smoothly. What do you think? Is it all nonsense to pay so much money for 8 megabyte and all the hassle? Or is it only nostalgia? What do you think? Did you also get some boards? Tell me down in the comments. And until next time, make some fun.